Hello everybody, my name is Himachu and today I'm going to be showing you how to export and master your renders in HDR even without an HDR display. Now before we begin, I want to let you know that even though this workflow works without an HDR setup, I highly recommend having at least some sort of HDR display. A TV or a phone will work. This is, this is just to get an idea of how it will look on a correct screen, let's say. So what are the prerequisites that we need to learn to export our works in HDR? Well, we need to understand what color space Blender works in and what is required for an HDR video. We need to know an unclipped file format which can support the high dynamic range of our render. And then finally, an HDR capable software to master our videos in HDR. All right, let's jump right into it. So by default, Blender uses the sRGB color space with the Filmic View Transform. If you want to learn what these are in detail, I will link some amazing sources in the description below if you want to learn more. HDR requires at least the DCI-P3 color space, while Rec 2020 is the standard for high quality HDR mastering. Unfortunately, Blender can do none of that. That's where ASUS comes in. Yet again, if you want to learn more about ASUS, you can do so with the links in the description below. But to explain in brief, ASUS converts the scene or any workflow into its own white color gamut and high dynamic range and allows for the conversion into any other smaller color spaces, which is exactly what we need. We are going to convert our scene into ASUS CG and then convert it into Rec 2020. Alright, so let's install ASUS for Blender. From the link in the description, download the ASUS config file like that. I'm just gonna download it on my desktop. Once it's downloaded, you can just unzip the file as I've done here. And when you open it, you can see that ASUS 1.2 is downloaded. So I'm gonna select everything, copy, make a new folder, paste everything in there. And then I'll cut and paste it somewhere safe, like my desktop, paste. And then simply go and delete everything. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to your ASUS folder and drag and drop everything inside the ASUS 1.2 folder. And that's basically it actually, but we have one more step to go. We're going to replace this config file with a smaller config file with only the color spaces that we're actually going to use. The default ASUS config file comes with hundreds I mean hundreds of view transforms and color spaces which we will almost never use in Blender actually. So uh, go to the description below and download the config file from the Google Drive link and then simply replace the file here. Once that's done you can see that the OCO file is much smaller than it actually was indicating that there are less number of color spaces in there. So just go back to the directory and open Blender. Now, if you go to color management, we can see that the display device says ACES, which means that ACES is currently installed. And if you click on view transform, we will see all the different color spaces that are now available to us. By default, it's going to be on sRGB. And the one we need is Rec 2020 1000 nits. SD2084 is the EOTF or the transfer function which is basically the gamma of the color space, like sRGB has 2.2, uh, Rec 2020 uses HD2084. Now, there are a few caveats to using ACES in Blender. The main thing is the viewport is gonna be a little darker, so you can compensate for that by changing uh, the look of Blender. Uh, and the next thing is that the color wheel is gonna be a little wonky, as you can see. I'm moving the colors around and it's getting darker and cannot reach maximum brightness without the colors shifting a bit. I don't know why that is, but uh, yeah, that's one of the quirks you're gonna have to deal with with ACES. But it's manageable. You can just, yeah, you can work with it. Now I've loaded up a scene in Blender using ACES sRGB, and we can see that when we are in a color space that our monitor actually perceives, it's gonna look fine. 
but if you go to any other thing it's going to look washed out actually normal but this is not how you are supposed to work just work in srgb and once you're done uh lighting and like texturing and modeling everything then you change it to rec 2020 1000 nits once you're done setting up our scene in blender we can move on to exporting it now to export our scene in high dynamic range we need an unclipped file format now what do i mean by that by default blender is set to png now even though png is uncompressed it still compresses the light values also called the dynamic range of the scene so it is unable to capture all the values from like the the blackish blacks to the whitish whites it compresses a lot of it and hence it is undesirable for our project uh the unclipped file formats are openexr radians hdr and tiff actually but the problem with the tiff is it's huge and secondly it bakes in the uh, view transform so whatever we are in like for example rec 2020 it's going to bake in this view transform into the file which is not what we need uh, if you're going to be in srgb it's going to uh, bake in this look into the file so what we're going to stick with is open exr i'm going to link down a uh, video by polyfjord who explains this in much more detail i highly recommend it out so we uh, make sure to be in rec 2020 1000 nits and change the file format to open exr change the codec to dwaa and then just hit render animation So after your animation is done rendering all you have to do is drag and drop all the images into the media pool so just control a and just drag and drop it uh davinci will understand that it's a, it's an image sequence so it's going to order it sequentially so it's basically a video file uh but as you can see the video is looking very differently to what it was in blender i've brought it to the timeline here and as you can see it's very dark uh the reason for that is the color space that the image sequences are in is acsg and davinci is not set to use acsa so what we're going to do we're going to go to file project settings and in color management we're going to change the color science to acs cct and now we get all these different view transforms and options to play with So this is how it's going to look by default everything is going to be set to no input transform the input device transform uh, is basically the input color space so because we exported in uh, aces the input device transform is going to be aces cg that's what we're feeding into davinci resolve and the output device is what is the color space that we need to be output so it's going to be rec 2020 also enable hdr 10 cuz this is what's going to enable us to master in hdr and hit save now we can start color grading our project i highly recommend you rec- uh, learn color grading in davinci resolve because it is fantastic the tools here are perfect for this workflow now in order to color grade to see what we're actually doing uh we should actually go back to whatever color space our monitor is set to so if it's rec 709 you can go back to rec 709 if it is srgb set it back to srgb if you have a dcip3 monitor uh change it to that and then hit save so now we can kind of see what the final output is going to look like and we can adjust it based on that so we can increase the shadows increase the highlights color graded everything and after you're done color grading you can simply go back to rec 2020 hit save now we are finally ready to export our video so just go to the export tab choose where you want to export i will i will export it on my desktop I'll just name it hdr and then change the format to mp4 codec to h265 uh you can choose whatever encoder you want it's nvidia by default check export hdr10 metadata embed hdr10 metadata and change the encoding profile to main 10 this is going to give us the 10 bit video format that is required for hdr so it's called hdr10 and then just add to render queue and then render all 
after it's done exporting you can simply open the file and as you can see it looks much better than what it was before before it was very washed out now the colors are fine and if i just uh check the properties in media info you can see that it is an hdr10 video so that's it you have successfully exported a render from blender to davinci resolve and mastered it in hdr